why does pi equal 3.14? People in antiquity would have known that there was a relationship between the length through two spokes of a wheel that you can see here in yellow and the distance around the wheel which you can see in blue. A person standing next to a horse-drawn cart might watch a single spoke make a full revolution. The spoke here is highlighted with a green dot. Watch it go around. The relationship between the length of the two spokes in yellow and the distance around the wheel in blue did not go unnoticed. A careful observer might notice this relationship when the horse pulls this cart forward. When the wheel makes a full revolution, the cart has advanced about three times longer than the measure of the double spoke length. In a simple shape presentation, our blue wheel has a double spoke length or diameter of three feet. In antiquity, a careful observer would be able to guess that the length around the wheel, also called the circumference, was about nine feet. If the wheel turned one time, the cart moved about nine feet forward. This brings us to the man who figured this relationship precisely, the ancient Greek scientist Archimedes. Archimedes lived in Sicily during the third century BC. Sicily was a strategic point between Rome in the north and Carthage in the south. Archimedes lived in Syracuse and the city came under Roman siege in 213 BC. The overwhelming Roman siege, however, was crippled by Archimedes' engineering. His machines, including catapults called scorpions, sunk Roman ships and significantly held off the Roman attack. Finally, the Romans were able to cut off the city and Archimedes was killed by the attacking Romans. His last words, apparently, as Romans entered his home and approached his workbench was, do not disturb my circles. Amazingly, around 250 BC, Archimedes was able to deduce pi from being about three to a, an exact 223 divided by 71 or 22 divided by seven, both of which are amazingly 3.14. The Greek letter pi is the first letter of the Greek word peri, which means around. Another geometry word used for circles is radius, which is Latin for spoke, a spoke on a wheel. This is the spoke bit between the tread and the center of the wheel. So two spokes together cover the full distance across the wheel. Two radii, the plural for radius, make the diameter and diameter is Greek for through measure. Finally, the distance around the tread of the wheel is the circumference, which is Latin for carry around. As Archimedes discovered, this distance around the wheel is 3.14 times longer than the diameter, or its two spokes lengths, two radii times 3.14. A rather amazing thing about mathematics is that we can make equations from normal human sentences. So the circumference of a wheel is 3.14 times the length of the wheel's diameter. We can take this English sentence and translate it into an equation. In blue, we have the circumference. In purple, the word is becomes an equals sign. 3.14 is in red, and diameter is in green. Even more simply, C for circumference equals pi, 3.14, times diameter, D. Or most simply, C equals pi times diameter. Or, if we just had a single spoke length, we can still find the circumference of the wheel. The circumference of a wheel is 3.14, times the length of two spokes. The circumference equals 3.14 times two times the spoke length, also known by its Latin name radius. 
Remember, two spoke lengths, two radii, make the diameter. So circumference equals 3.14 times 2 times the radius. And we can simplify this even further to c equals 2 pi r. The horse pulls the cart forward. If the diameter is 3 feet across, we know the wheel is 9.42 feet around. And we also know the cart has advanced 9.42 feet forward each time the wheel makes a full revolution. We still use the number Archimedes deduced in 250 BC to establish the relationship between the diameter or the radius length and the circumference of the circle. For more information on math as history, I recommend the book The Math Book by Clifford Pickover, or if you're interested in Archimedes and the lives of other Greeks, I recommend A History of Ancient Greece and Fifty Lives by David Studdard. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good day.